It's Tuesday morning, and that's Pastor Pat's potpourri. I'm working out of my home as Diane still requires my attention. Tuesday's the day we don't have a specific passage, so I've reserved the right to wander. Now that being said, I'm gonna stay right here in 2 Kings 4. If you read past the story of the widow, you're introduced to another woman, the Shunammite. The first woman was the wife of a prophet. From her, we learn much about faith and obedience. The story of the second woman teaches us about hospitality, spiritual perception, generosity, commitment, faith, perseverance, and gratitude. Now, since we've already spent quite a bit of time on the wife of the prophet, I'm gonna talk primarily about the Shunammite. However, I think it's worth noting the contrast in these two women. One was dirt poor, and the other was extremely wealthy. I'm still pondering the ministry implications. Talk about a ministry of diversity for Elisha. These two women moved in completely different sociological worlds, but they were both godly women. And Elisha ministered effectively to them both. Someday I'm gonna come back to these two women. I'm sure there's a powerful sermon on diverse ministry in this passage, but honestly, my head's primarily fixated on the woman I live with, so that sermon's gonna have to wait. The English Standard Version says that the Shunammite woman was wealthy. The King James Version says she was great. In the passage about the Shunammite woman, I saw seven ways in which she was great. First, she was great in hospitality. She persuaded him to eat some food, and so it was. And often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat food. Not only did she treat him well the first time, but she extended a gracious, open-ended invitation, which he accepted. Second, she was great in spiritual perception. I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Third, she's great in using her material wealth for the Lord. She proposed to her husband that he build a studio apartment on the roof with a bed, a table, a stool, and a candle. This woman prepared a guest room in her own home. Drop by any time, man of God. Fourth, she was great in humility. Elisha wanted to return her kindness, but she sought no worldly reward from him and was perfectly satisfied with her life, saying, I'll just dwell with my people. Elisha came to find out that the woman was childless. It's a reproach for a Jewish wife. Her husband was old and there was little chance for her to conceive apart from a miracle from God. But Elisha told her that there was a reward for her kindness. At this season next year, you shall embrace a son. And to her great joy, she became a mother. And so began her emotional roller coaster. When the boy was old enough to accompany his father to the field, he suffered what appears to have been sunstroke, and he died in his mother's arms. But the story of this great woman does not end here. She was a woman of great faith. The woman told no one, not even her husband, that her son had died. In faith, she committed the dead boy to the Lord by placing him on the bed of the man of God. She offered no reason to her husband for requesting transportation and a servant to accompany her to visit Elisha, even though he thought it was kind of weird that she would seek the prophet when there was no special occasion. The sorrow-stricken mother rode a donkey some 15 miles to Mount Carmel where she spotted Elisha. Faith rose up within her, and without delay, she poured out her heart to the prophet. She had not requested a son, but now losing him was worse than not having a son at all. Still, not the end of the story. This woman was great in perseverance. When she heard that Elisha was ordering Gehazi, his servant, to go and put his staff on the face of the child, she objected, insisting the prophet go perform the miracle himself. Her faith clung to Elisha. Gehazi could not help. The man of God was needed. Elisha hurried to the house and realizing the full extent of the calamity, he shut himself in a room with the dead boy and he prayed that the boy's life would be restored. The Lord responded to Elisha's faith and prayer, and life from God was miraculously imparted into the lifeless body after Elisha paced the floor, waiting for God to answer his prayer. The boy sneezed seven times, a sign of restored breathing. The faith of the woman 
was rewarded and her child was raised from the dead. Here's a little side note. You can find her story recorded in the New Testament as well. Look it up, Hebrews 10.35. Finally, this woman was great in gratitude. The boy was presented alive to his mother, who in humble gratitude went in, fell at Elisha's feet, bowed herself to the ground. This pious and faithful woman, in a time of general apostasy, made God a vital part of her life and her home. Receiving a prophet because of he who sent him, she received a prophet's reward in the gift most precious to a Jewish mother, a son which she had not dared to hope for, even when it was announced to her. The prophet's widow and the Shunammite woman are great examples of godly women. I know several women who emulate her. I live with one. Lord, the spiritual lives of these two women are role models, not just for women. They're role models for everyone. God, give me the grace to emulate them in the way I live. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.